I'm Susanna Morris, and I'm here to talk about Afrofuturist and Indigenous Futurist Horizons. A little bit about me. I'm an Associate Professor of Literature, Media, and Culture at Georgia Tech, and I'm a scholar of Black feminism, Afrofuturism, and the Anthropocene. I'm really interested in how Black creators, uh, Black cultural producers, whether they are writers or urban planners, um, musicians, any kind of cultural producer, how they envision futures with Black folk at the center rather than at the margins. I'm also really interested in how we understand this sort of geological epoch that we're in that many scholars are identifying as the Anthropocene. So this idea that human beings are driving much of the geological uh, changes, right? Things that we're seeing with climate change and climate chaos. I want to talk about three writers who I think are really important to helping us re-envision futures with marginalized folks at the center and that are offering hopeful uh, changes or hopeful prophecies maybe could be a way to describe it. So one is Stephanie Cox, and she has a short story called Firewall. So Cox is a writer and city planner based in LA, and her work is found lots of different places. Uh, where I found her work originally was LeVar Burton's podcast, LeVar Burton Reads. And she has a short story called Firewall, which you can also, in addition to listening to it on the podcast, you can find it in Glass and Garden Solar Punk Summers. And so the Solar Punk uh, anthology really has um, an interesting, hopeful, kind of sunny future where all the authors are thinking about a future in which human beings, technology, and nature coexist in fruitful ways, right? So they're not utopian futures necessarily, but they are ones in which human beings exist. Nature also exists alongside us. Um, and that they're integrated in a particular kind of way and that human beings are using uh, technology in ways that hearken to um, more expansive and inclusive ways of using technology. So let me give you a specific example from Firewall. So in Firewall, the protagonist is the grandchild of an engineer who's a Black woman who invented this wall that uses water technology and some other fancy speculative design to create a barrier between the city of, of Los Angeles and the fires that rage just beyond the wall because they live in a future in which fire season is a 365-day-a-year phenomenon, right? And so human beings have to exist within that. And they come up with this technology that uses the resources around them and allows people to live within this futuristic Los Angeles. There's also this true democracy. They don't live in a representative democracy. They make decisions and everyone gets a chance to sort of weigh in on it. And that's another part of the firewall phenomenon. So that gives us sort of a way to think through climate change. Another story that I think is makes interesting points about climate change in the future and that centers um, Indigenous folks in particular is Darcy Little, Badger, Little Badger's Nole. And it's found in a compilation, an anthology called Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time, which is an anthology of LGBT uh, sci-fi work by Indigenous authors. And so similar to sort of Stephanie Cox, Little Badger uh, is someone who works thinking through issues of environment in science. Uh, she is uh, she has a degree in oceanography, a, a PhD in oceanography. So she writes speculative fiction, but she's also an earth scientist, and she's a member of the Lipan Apache tribe of Texas. So she writes this story that is about two women on a spaceship who are veterinarians taking these dogs into Mars. It's amazing, and it talks about living off off planet, right, and these sort of exo communities, and how that's one way to sort of live through and deal with um, climate disaster, right, and that 
there are communities that in some ways are similar to reservations, but in other ways are communities that folks choose, right, that folks have not been colonized out of or into. Um, And so imagine the future in which Indigenous folk get to create their own futures in particular kinds of ways while combating climate change. So that's another future that's sort of filled with hope, but also looking at technology. And the last example I want to give is Alexis Pauline Gum's uh, interesting kind of genre-bending Uh, book, Undrowned, Black Feminist Lessons from Marine Mammals. And so Alexis Pauline Gums is an independent scholar. She's a poet and activist. Um, She's a degree um, PhD in literature from Duke University. She also calls herself a queer troublemaker and Black feminist love evangelist and, quote, an aspirational cousin to all sentient beings. And that comes out in Undrowned, where she gives us these different lessons based on all kinds of marine mammals, seals, dolphins, and so on, and how they sort of understand themselves and how we might understand ourselves alongside them. So she calls for the complete divestment of all sort of um, sea industries, fishing, um, fishing for pelts for food or anything like that, right? And so it's one way to combat uh, climate change, right, overfishing and, and all of these things is by thinking about ourselves as kin to these mammals that are in many ways quite different from us. They live in different environments, but imagining ourselves not by anthropomorphizing them, but uh, maybe marinizing ourselves and sort of thinking about what it might mean, what kind of lessons we might glean from seeing the world from their perspective. Um, So Stephanie Cox, Darcy Little Badger, and Alexis Pauline Gums are Afrofuturists and Indigenous futurists who are really thinking through recentering marginalized communities in the climate change conversation. And I think they have really important things to add to our understanding of climate change and the future.